Outrocast. Hi. Hey, Anne, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you okay. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Aside from talking to media, good day for you so far? Yeah, it's been a great day. Yeah. So glad to hear that. Now, the last time I had the pleasure of speaking with you, Fierce Bliss was not announced. You'd done some of the shows at City Winery in New York City, but we didn't quite know, hey, Anne's got an album out, uh, or rather in the works. We just thought, hey, there's a couple of new songs. Yeah. Uh, when did you actually finish Fierce Bliss? Uh, let's see. We finished mixing it. About the time we were playing at City Winery, it was being mixed. Yeah. And around how many songs did you write for the album? Because there's 11 on the U.S. version. I don't know if there's overseas bonus tracks. I wrote seven of the 11 and four are covers that I just couldn't live without, you know? Sure. So when you write an album, like that number of songs is what makes the cut. You're not one of those artists that goes like, I wrote 50 songs for the new album. No, I didn't do do it that way. I've never been able to do that. Um, for me, every song is a is a, a birth a birth process. You know, I mean, it's it's not easy for me to write. Um, it was easier this time, but uh, yeah. So I wrote probably about uh, see the the seven and maybe one or two more that I'm still working on now to try and get right. You know. Hmm. So you're not one of those people where the songs come in four minutes when you're not trying to write, you actually sit down to write? I sit down to write with a notebook. And a, a couple of times down through the years, they've come quickly, like uh, I think a song like Hear a Song in the Early Days or Barracuda came pretty fast. Mm. Um, and some of the songs on this album weren't terribly difficult to write. Like Greed was pretty easy. Uh, took a while, but you know, it wasn't painful. It was, I knew what I wanted to say, you know. Hmm. And the album besides having great song craft has some cool guests on there like Kenny Wayne Shepherd, yeah, and yeah. Hill, Warren Haynes. Did you know outright, hey, I want to get some famous friends on this album? Well, I wasn't thinking about famous as much as I was thinking about people who could bring something incredible to it, you know, like Kenny Wayne has got that super cool guitar monster type thing that he does mm -hmm. and blues, you know, and I knew there was, there were going to be a couple of blues songs, a uh, bridge of size and angels blues missionary man uh, that he really um, his thing really brought them out, you know, and Warren Haynes, of course, what can be said about Warren, except that he, he's just a fantastic player. And um, he's really imaginative. What he came up with for the guitar playing, the guitar part on Gladiator was mind boggling to me when he sent it to me in his little, little iPhone demo, you know, it was long and it went through all these different changes. And his idea was to come up with a rock epic, sort of like the Zeppelin Rain song you know, that really takes you places. And uh, yeah, it was really inspiring working with both those people. And with Tom Bukovac, you know, my guitarist. He's a, he's another one. He, he really brings a lot, you know. So it sounds like you trust geniuses to do the things on their own as opposed to singing the solos to them. Right, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't hire them so I could boss them around. I hired them for what they could bring to the fire, you know, and, and uh, that that's much better for them because, you know, all the guys in the amazing dogs that you saw at the winery were, they're like top level studio players and they've played all kinds of sessions where people hire them and say, play this, this is what we're going to do on this. And right. no, don't do that, do this. And so I don't do that. And they, they're really glad and it just allows them to open up and spill, you know, which I love. I like that, that, uh, you know, unplanned feeling like anything can happen. You recorded the album in both Muscle Shoals, Alabama and Nashville, but you live in Florida. Do you have a home yeah. recording studio setup kind of situation? Yeah, we have a Pro Tools rig here at the house because sometimes I like to come and, 
come back and do vocals in private, mm-hmm. just with somebody running the rig, and then because I don't want to feel pressure. Um, but I also recorded up in Connecticut at uh, Power Station with Government Mule. Hmm. Is that the same power station that mo- from New York City that moved out to Connecticut? I think so. Yeah, yeah. It, it's up in New Haven, up by New Haven. Wow, I didn't. I never knew that there was a new power station. They, they, when they go down the the New York City studios that came and went, they never talk about power station in the present tense. Did you do a lot of recording in New York back in the day? Oh, we were we worked on private audition there. We worked at the, uh, well, the power station. Is that the one that was right across the street from the playground where they shot West Side Story? The original West Side Story. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. that was the one we worked at, yep. Wow, so power station. Back in the day. Now and then, okay. Yeah, yeah. So so going back, when I asked how many songs you do per album, uh, in terms of writing, you said, you know, seven plus there's four covers on this one. Are you the kind of artist that when you finish an album, you start to think, okay, my next one? Or are you the one that goes, ooh, three years, I'm off now? Neither one. Um, when I finish an album, I usually say, okay, now let's take these out and play. The songs aren't done the minute they're on tape. The songs mm-hmm. still continue to live and grow the more you play them live. Like with Heart, for instance, if uh, What About Love had been left to just be the, you know, immortalized on tape song, it would be a lot different than it is today. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's an extreme cool power ballad with all this drama to it and everything now. Since it's been played like six billion times live. <laughs> So do you have plans to play a lot in the new record on upcoming tour dates, or is it like two or three songs mixed with the hits? Mixed with the hits. Um, I do about 40% of my set as heart songs because I love to sing them and they're great and people love to hear them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but I always do a mix because it's not me about, it's not about me coming and trying to be heart. You know, this is, this is, Ann Wilson and the Amazing Dog. So I bring as much of the new stuff. Oh, did I lose you? Because I love them so much. I got to get inside them. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It seems like you're back now. Are you back? I'm back. I'm back. Well, that's good. Yeah, we have, we have some weather coming in here. So it might, you know, anything can happen from now on. <laughs> But it's cool to see that it's a mix of the new record, Heart Classics. And when I saw you at City Winery, there were some really cool covers you did. Jeff Buckley. uh, I know we heard The Who. We heard Aerosmith. Is that a permanent part of your set? Or is that just more of a fun thing to do in in an intimate venue like City Winery? No, uh, it's fun to do in an intimate venue, of course, because you have that close close connection with people. But those songs were picked by me because they translate live and they like the, like the Who song um, is such a great rock song. I just love to turn Tom Bukovac and the dogs loose on that because they, they just explode on that. And um, same with the Aerosmith song. It's decades and decades old now, but it seems to just have this, this immediacy that defies any passage of time. So that's why I like to do songs like that. I like the poetry involved in them and I love what they, they, they allow me to do vocally. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. So you made a really good point where you talk about how playing the song breathes energy into it, leads to its further development. How far ahead in your career do you actually look? Are you one of those people who goes one step at a time or might there secretly be some private gigs booked three years from now? Well, I'm not a calculating person in terms of having a formula, you know, for the future. Like I'm, if I had to choose one of those, I'd say I'm a one thing at a time person where we're, I make an album, I'm happy with it. And then I go out and I 
delve into it more live and bring the songs to life. And then out of that will come the new, the next new songs. I think one thing makes the next thing happen. So this is a compliment. There's no back-ended thing to it. Uh, I put you in rare company when it comes to rock artists, not just because of the greatness of the output, but the commercial success and the accomplishments. So I get the impression that you pretty much accomplished everything you ever wanted to. And this is kind of like a bonus round of, I do whatever I want for as long as I want to. Am I way off in thinking that and saying that? No, you're not. You're not off at all. I've done, I think I've been there, done that <laughs> in a lot of those other ways of feeling like doing things for accomplishments, um, doing things because you think you're going to, you think you know how to write a hit single, you know, and that stuff just really, that's all illusion, really. The only thing that's really real about having a career like this is doing what you do and, and um, having it be the real thing, the best you can do and enjoying it and living it, you know, that's, that's really honestly what I feel about all this at this point. Is there a number two creative passion for you besides music? Number two creative passion. I suppose it would be, um, it would be fashion design because I went to college for that after high school, just, uh, I never made it as a fashion designer. I always designed my own clothes for stage, but never went up to the heights I was dreaming of. But I still love to draw and I love to to hang things on a human form. And um, uh, creatively, I like that. And I like to write. I like to write poetry and prose. Wow. Okay. Well, Two last questions, and then I'm going to let you roam free and deal with the storm. And the first one is, do you have a favorite album of the last year or so besides your new one? A favorite album of the last year? Well, I'm really big into, into um, Marconi Union right now. I like that, that whole ambient uh, kind of wordless, no vocals type thing that they're doing and they keep putting out new albums <laughs> one's called weightless one's called tokyo um just just all kind of, like i like that kind of stuff and i always have it on i'm a big lucinda fan lucinda williams fan sure i like anything she does <laughs> and then my my last question is i peg you too, as being too smart to watch way too much TV like I do. But do you have a TV recommendation or two to pass along for someone who needs a new show to start? Yeah. Have you seen Peaky Blinders? Uh, my wife watches it. I have not seen it. I, I take it I'm missing out. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Um, I've been watching... I think I lost you again. Oh, you froze again. Yeah. I, so I, I lost that. I've been watching what after Peaky Blinders? Oh, um, Succession. Okay. Succession. Billions. Alan Ruck. Yes. Yeah. Billions. And uh, let's see. What else? Have we, we, we just consume stuff. So it's hard for me to remember all the stuff we've been watching. Um, well, you know, I even watched... Uh, Call the midwife, which is long and just goes on. I like the English things too. I okay. think they're really well done. Well, what I'm learning here is you've also got taste outside of the musical realm. So, so the bottom line is I'm looking forward to seeing you live in New York, whether it's at a big place like Jones Beach, whether it's at a city winery, whatever it is, looking forward to it, Anne. Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Take care. Okay, you too. Thanks. Thanks for this. Outro okay.